Budapest, Hungary is the site for the oldest championship in figure skating. 31 European nations are represented here, vying for titles and selecting their lineups for next month's world championships. Russia's Yevgeny Plashenko is unquestionably the greatest skater in the world today. But even the best can be vulnerable. The world champion is scrambling to complete an uncomfortable season that has required his best efforts. On an injured knee that requires surgery, today he boldly plans two quads and seven triples, which may be asking a lot. France's Brian Joubert has competed only twice at the European Championship. From third in 2002 to second last year, there is one spot left on the podium to occupy. And helping Joubert unseat the Russian at the top is Plashenko's old rival, Alexei Yagudin. I feel a lot of pressure because um, I want to win a silver medal or maybe a gold. The ladies' competition has no clear-cut favorite. For the last decade, the Russians have dominated. But five-time champ Irina Slutskaya is home battling a serious illness, her career in question. The burden now rests on her close friend, Yelena Sokolova, the world silver medalist. At age 27, Ukraine's Yelena Lyashenko has come to these championships for 11 straight years. Will this be the day she finally wins gold? Or will Yulia Sebastian, who left her family at the age of 13 to train here in Budapest, give Hungary its first European ladies title in the history of the sport? skating championships just a striking view of one of the grand old european capitals the danube running straight down the middle with boot on one side pest on the other hence budapest the capital city of hungary for the sixth time this event being held here the first time since 1984 as we welcome you inside the budapest sports arena along with dick button and peter carruthers i'm terry gannon Peggy Fleming joins us a little bit later when the ladies take the ice, but the men are up first. On the ice, warming up the reigning world champion, Yevgeny Plashenko, and Dick, he's the leader after the short program. Well, you know, he's got a lot of charisma, he's got a lot of pizzazz, and I'm always fascinated to watch him. He also has frantic arms, he mugs a little bit, but I can never take my eyes off him, and he's a great jumper. Look at this. Really, really first-rate jumping ability. But we will see how that torn meniscus holds up today. Right behind him is the two-time and reigning French national champion, Brian Joubert. Well, now, he's a very classy skater. Look at the back on that jump that he just landed. He's understated. He's strong. He's a good jumper. He's a, well, just a solid all-around competitor. I like him very much. Joubert with a great opportunity to perhaps win his first gold medal at Europeans. Two Russians in the top three, including the 23-year-old Ilya Klimkin, who was skating on an injured Achilles tendon, but feeling a lot of pressure to skate well here. Remember, this is not just about titles and medals here at Europeans, but also about who will skate at the World Championships in Dortmund, Germany at the end of March. So Klimkin trying to make his way onto the Russian world team. And that is never easy, given the competition in Russia. We talked about this being the oldest championship in skating. 1891 was the first year, and the Russians have dominated. In terms of the men, eight gold medals, the last seven going to Russian men, five of the last six silver medals to Russians. So most people with that history expecting Yevgeny Plashenko to dominate, to win his fourth European title. However, so far here in Budapest, it has not been easy. And here's Peter Carruthers with more on that. Well, Terry, if Yevgeny Plashenko wins his fourth European title, it will be a big deal because everybody thought he was just going to run away with this title coming in. But he was challenged in the short program when he barely hit his quad-toe, double-toe combination. Usually he does a big quad-triple without any problem. But the guy who really stepped up was Brian Joubert of France, who has won a bronze medal here and a silver. Joubert was awesome in the short program when he landed his quad-toe, triple-toe combination. And he got the nod from the judges. In fact, four of the nine judges gave Joubert first place. Now, I talked to Pashenko today about 
his right knee. He has a torn meniscus in that knee. He says it's really not causing him too many problems, but I can guarantee you one thing. He's looking over his shoulder right now at the young Frenchman who's trying to steal away his European title. Terry, back to you. All right, Peter, thank you very much. Plenty of red, white, and blue in the stands in terms of the flags because you got a couple of Russians, a couple of Frenchmen in the top four. Plashenko's in first, then Brian Joubert, the two-time French national champ, ahead of Ilya Klimkin and then Frédéric Dambier rounding out the top four. But on the ice first, the 18-year-old from Switzerland, Stefan Lambiel, the four-time Swiss national champion who trains in Geneva and part of the year in Oberstdorf, Germany. had great success at the European Championships. In the last two years, he's had top five finishes. This combination will set him up or not. A quadruple, beautiful, beautiful triple toe, quadruple toe combination. Beautiful, neat, low, soft landing. He's a first-rate, all-around stylist, as well as a technician. That's good to see. He also has that wonderful Swiss gene of being able to spin his way out of this world. What is it about Swiss spinners, Dick? You, I told you. Cinderu. It's a gene. <laughs> it's something in the water. Triple axle. Ah. That looked like he just wasn't able to correct the revolution to stop it. <laughs> Combination triple flip, triple toe load. <laughs> Look at the speed he gets here and the very good centering at this point positions to, I mean, wonderful, wonderful head back position. A little bit sloppy at the end, but I mean, these guys know how to spin. It was a couple of years ago that Stefan Lambiel brought the house down at the European Championships. He was the surprise fourth place finisher, and that was the year that the Europeans were held in Lausanne. So you can imagine what the Swiss crowd thought of his performance. Triple Lux that ended up being double. He can't make mistakes like this if he's going to hold his position or get higher in the standings. footwork it's okay but it doesn't really have great inventiveness or difficulty or unusual quality it's almost as if he does the choreography but to this point in the program he hasn't been feeling it at 18 I guess it's hard to be truly interpretive of your choreography Nice triple saw cow. Now this is circular footwork, and look at how he picks up the energy and picks up the focus, the point of view of this circle. Much better. Now look at the 
quality of this spin. And right here, he's a little wild going into it, but look at the speed that he gets. That position is wonderful. Back sit spin. Now watch this. I mean, it's traveling, but look at that head position. That's terrific. You see, at this point in his program, he's really gaining it. He, he's gained confidence by this point. There's a much more of a focus at this point. I mean, I really like this, uh, this entire performance. And a nod to the crowds here in Budapest. They have been absolutely tremendous during the European Championships. Stefan Lambiel, the 18-year-old from Switzerland. Now, look at this combination right at the start. A quadruple toe right there. Very nice landing. Deep knee and a triple toe loop. Clean, straight edges, and that was good. And this combination spin, I mean, he puts a lot of energy into it, so it becomes a little bit rough. But the kind of speed here is very hard to do and very unusual. And that headless thing, I've got to tell you, that is difficult. Well... We've got the interim international system in play, not the new system we saw in the Grand Prix Series. There is a panel of 14 judges, but only nine of their scores actually count. They're all anonymous. Even the judges don't know which scores count, but the old perfect 6.0 is being used, of course. Now, the technical merit marks and the numbers displayed in ascending order, 5.4 up to 5.7. And the second set for presentation, 5-3 up to 5-8, so Stefan Lambiel with a great performance here. And we'll return with more of the 2004 European Figure Skating Championships right after this. A reminder, ABC Sports, ESPN, and ESPN2 will provide exclusive coverage of the 2004 World Figure Skating Championships from Dortmund, Germany. Our coverage begins Thursday, March 25th with the pairs and men's competitions and concludes Saturday with the dance and ladies championships. The world's best in figure skating competing at the 2004 World Championships on ABC Sports, ESPN, and ESPN2. Back inside the Budapest Sports Arena, Frédéric Dambier from France takes the ice. The 26-year-old and three-time French silver medalist trying to medal here at the European Championships. NBA currently in fourth after the short program. A quad Salkow. Now that was that was really beautiful. Wonderfully straight back on the landing. edges, the security of them. This triple salcow. Triple salcow, triple toe, slightly off balance on the second one, but the first jump was really ph just phenomenally perfect. Dombier did not go to the World Championships last season because of what happened at Europeans. He placed eighth. Brian Joubert and Stenix Jeanette, his teammates from France, finished ahead of him. They both medaled. They went to world, not him. France only had two spots. Triple axle, double, but the this takeoff edge was very weak. There was no lift up into the air, and the second jump just a little bit off balance. One of the things he has is a lot of spread eagles through the program. He uses them very well.
double instead of a triple. Good height on that flying death drop back sit spin. Again, a spread eagle into this triple Lutz. His landings are always just kind of a little bit frayed, almost as if his teeth are chattering when he lands them. Right there, again, you see it's not kind of a perfect smooth landing, but it was a clean jump. Unlike Brian Joubert, but like most of the top French skaters, he trains in Paris. Had an up-and-down year on the Grand Prix circuit, came in eighth at home in Trophy La Ligue, but then won his first Grand Prix medal, a bronze at Cup of Russia. traveling on the ice keeps the spin from being centered these moves in the field incorporating different kinds of elements of steps etc i think very well done use of spread eagles direction but it's interesting it's also very French in style you know he really feels the music he does he skates with conviction there's a solidity there and I like that and there's nothing excessive trying to move up from fourth after the short program and win his first medal at European 26 year old Federic Dambier Remember, his French teammate, Brian Joubert, still to skate. He is pressing the reigning world champion. He's won a bronze and a silver. Now, can he win a gold? Boshenko has not been dazzling so far here in Budapest, but he is your leader after the short, trying to win his fourth gold medal in this event. But back in the kitchen cry, Dom Bier now, waiting for his marks. And those marks are really very good. They're, they're steady marks. There's nothing out of line there. He's a wonderful skater. He's got solid, good edges. He feels the music, but he did double one triple jump, and he had some very scratchy landings, and I think that hurt him. His coach, Anique Gaia Gay, on the right side of your screen, she's very happy, and Dom Bier currently is in first place. We'll see if it holds up. Well, Budapest is not only a great European capital of architecture, which it is, but also a medicinal capital. The hot springs here have been in use for centuries. They date back to the Roman times. Just about anything that ails you, well, you can get a cure right here. In many ways, it is a fountain of youth in Budapest. A reminder, ABC Sports, ESPN, and ESPN2 will provide exclusive coverage of the 2004 World Figure Skating Championships from Dortmund, Germany. Our coverage begins Thursday, March 25th with the pairs and men's competitions and concludes Saturday with the dance and ladies championships. The world's best in figure skating competing at the 2004 World Championships on ABC Sports, ESPN, and ESPN2. Meanwhile, the French national champion making his way out to the ice, Brian Joubert, who has told us his goal is to be the Olympic champion. He's got some great help trying to get there. One of his coaches these days is the Olympic champ, Alexei Yagudin. Because more higher you jump, harder to land. While Joubert may be a rising star in France, back in his hometown, he is still very much a typical teenager.
Welcome to Poitiers, my town. Brian Joubert grew up three hours south of Paris in the small town of Poitiers. Today, he's the top skater in the country, France's best bet for a world medal. Most skaters at his level train in Paris, but Brian prefers to stay close to home. In my life, there is not just the, the figure skating. For me, it's the most important is to, to stay with my family, with my friend, because I, I was born in Poitiers. This is Blade, my dog. He is uh, three months. Say hi. Hello. <laughs> Brian tries to spend as much time as possible with his family and friends. And like most 19-year-olds, Brian is always finding time for a girlfriend. When I have a date, the most important for me is to, to speak with the girl, to know her. Now, however, there's a new woman in his life. This year, Brian became an uncle. My uh, big love is, is my niece, and uh, I love her. She's the most important uh, in my life. As France's new leading man, Brian hopes to follow in the footsteps of his countryman, Philippe Candeloro. Philippe Candeloro is a very good skater. He get two medals in the Olympic championship, but I hope to win a gold medal, not a bronze medal. His fans span the country, but his most loyal fan club is right at home. Dans le sens, mademoiselle. I love children later. I want to do coaching. I try to translate my knowledge. I hope for, for the children they uh, will be a champion. His schedule is indeed packed, but Brian finds time for just one more hobby. For me, to, to drive a motorcycle, it's like uh, to skate. I try to have a lot of speed, like uh, on ice. Brian's learned to juggle his skating with a normal teenage life, but once in a while, he's reminded that his life is anything but typical. in the supermarket or in the, or in the ice rink or somebody uh, looked at me and they said, oh, it's very enjoyable. I like it. It's very, very fun. I hope to be a big champion in, uh, um, for my city. Very proud to be from France, and his fans return the emotion. They're out in full force, and Peter Shrew Heathers is in the thick of things. Terry, a lot of different fan clubs here from different countries, but one of the biggest is from France. They follow Brian Joubert all the way to Budapest to watch him try to win his first European title. They've got everything. They've got horns, they've got pom-poms, flags, you name it. What more could you want? For a 19-year-old, that's some pretty good support. Back to you. How about a little wine and cheese? Is that too much to ask for from the French crowd? On the ice, the French national champion, Brian Joubert, was extremely close in the short program, a 5-4 split. He's in second. picture the matrix which explains the costume this opening quadruple toe as beautiful as they come did you notice the back on the landing that was marvelous he's never beaten you have Genny Plushenko he won the bronze in 2002 the silver in 2003 now he wants gold Look at the lightness, the opening of the revolution, the ending of it in the air, and then landing. This a triple axle. Now watch the takeoff, the landing. Very, very, I mean, just the entire line of the edge coming out is marvelous. No back inside edge, no squiggles, no forced landing on that. Here you see the influence of Alexei Yagudin and Nikolai Morozov.
One thing he's done is to up his technical merit. He's planned here a quadruple toe, but since he's already done one, it's got to be in combination. Oh, well, the, certainly the quadruple was stunningly beautiful. The second jump, a little bit uncontrolled on the landing. He didn't stop the revolution. But, Dick, that's the first time he's ever done that, a quad and a quad combination in the same program. And he deserves great credit for that. It's a tough move. Again, he needs to check those landings just a, a little bit more so that it stops the revolution and he can flow out of it. Circular footwork. The start of it, very much Yagutan influence. Speaking of Yagutan, Ryan tells us he will spend time this summer in Simsbury, Connecticut, training with the Olympic champion. His main coach, though, Laurent Depoui, because Joubert does not want to move away from Poitiers, has moved to the small town and has been staying in a hotel for the last five months or so while training Brian. Combination spin, not particularly good. He's too far up on the toe. The spin is traveling in addition. Now here's where you see Yagudin's influence in this straight line footwork. Dick, yeah, Gooden doesn't have to be your coach to see his influence. His influence is seen in the footwork throughout men's skating. You know, one of the things about Joubert is that he kind of believes in what he's doing. That's why I find this beautiful, that was beautiful, triple salka. But I find the choreography really flows from one end to the other. He believes in what it, I mean, it's not just disjointed. It's sort of a complete whole. I like that. The end kind of drizzles off a little bit. It doesn't end with as much impact as it could. But overall, I think he's really a positive skater. I mean, strong, powerful, good edging. Those jumps when he lands them with his, uh, and checks them in the early part of the program in particular were brilliant. And he's trying to turn around what was a disappointing season earlier. He didn't make it to the Grand Prix final. Last year, he won a bronze medal there, but he won the French national title. Now he's trying to win the European championship and it may be tough to be. We'll see. For Plushenko, that's a high standard that has just been set by Brian Joubert. Now, look at this quadruple toe loop right at the beginning. Watch the toe pick. Keep the line of the body. And right there, see how nice the head, right the head all the way down is back to the toe. And that's a very, very good quality. There's no out-of-control element there. Right there, he steps into the second jump and then sort of leaves, lets that one fling around a little bit. Doesn't check the right shoulder. But all three happy about the performance at the end. Remember, the last seven gold medals at Europeans have been won by Russian men. Ryan Joubert trying to change that. Technical merit, 5'7 to 5'9. I mean, they're good marks. I mean, he has some very good technique in there. He could improve his spins, but the edging is just first rate. He believes in what he's doing, which reflects, I think, in this uh, presentation scores. Up to 5'8 for presentation, and the placements from the judges, all ones across the board. For Brian Joubert, he was in second after the short, not anymore. He holds the lead. So it's up to Plushenko now, the two-time world champion. Remember, he lost in the final of the Grand Prix series to Emmanuel Sandu. Can he win his title back here? The world champion's taste in music certainly runs the gamut. And Plushenko this season teamed up with Hungarian composer Edvin Martin.
to collaborate on the music for his free skate. I saw him first time in my life to skating live, and it was an incredible vision in my mind that we have to actually put together something incredible. As a tribute to the legendary ballet dancer Nijinsky, Martin merged the sound of his priceless Stradivarius made in 1697 with a modern day break beat. For a skater, it's very, very important when he jumps, the people could see and could prepare for that. And of course, artistically, he has to express himself as well. So it was not such an easy job to do. To contribute to Nizhinsky is something comes from, from heaven. And when you a little bit contribute yourself to the artistic side and show actually a, a little bit more of your inside, this is what makes you special. More from Budapest, Hungary, when we come back. And Joubert, his work is done. He's the current leader, and like all of you at home, he's going to sit up and watch the rest of it on TV. He's in the broadcast booth for French television. Set to watch Evgeny Plushenko. Not only the world champion, but also the three-time European champ. Ulrich Salko has nine European titles overall, so he's not approaching that, but it would be impressive. Number four. Won one in 2000, another one the next year, and then last year he won again in Malmo, Sweden. So here's Pashenko with the lead after the short program. But remember, Brian Joubert was very good in his free skate. And Pashenko barely beat him in the short program. It was a 5-4 split with the judges. And look at the time he's taking to settle into the position on the ice. You think there's a little theatrical chutzpah there? The 21-year-old, originally from Volgograd, who now lives in St. Petersburg. with a quadruple combination little curl at the end no sustained run out but that was a full and complete combination he recently won his fifth Russian national title including a performance with ten perfect sixes in the free skate this a triple axel watch the forward oh my oh that is the worst Kind of fall. Remember that forward outside edge, the most dangerous move in skating. Can throw you off balance so easily that you never know what hit you. The music Scheherazade, one of Nijinsky's favorite pieces of music. Uh, that was to have been a triple axle. It was singled. This is not a good start for him. He's gonna be in trouble if he doesn't uh, maintain all these jumps. He needs the technical merit. And Dick, I mentioned that he lost in the Grand Prix final, but it wasn't because of all of his mistakes. He, he did one extra combination. He did three combinations, and the rules state, at least with that system, you can only do two, and that cost him the title. Now this combination, the triple axle again, the forward edge, then a triple toe loop and a double loop. Flip. Ah, you know, I mean, this is the third major mistake that he's made. Uh, I think he's a little bit in trouble here at this point. And coming in, most experts had already handed him the title. This would be a major upset. There's a Nijinsky move. There's another one, a sort of a, a Nijinsky move out of Afternoon of a Fawn, his most famous choreo choreography. Straight line footwork.
Unfortunately, it's been afternoon of a fall for Yevgeny Plushenko. Triple Lutz jump. Okay, not inspiring, it didn't fly. Triple loop jump. Catch foot spin combination. The back sit spin. I mean, this, this whole spin combination is relatively slow. He sits up on the top of his toe pick, and it doesn't help uh, in, in the revolutions in smoothing this spin out and, and allowing it to keep its speed. I mean, here, I don't understand this move. I never have. Why, Dick? What do you mean? Because I think catching the blade like that is just unnecessary. It's an ugly spiral position. It doesn't go anywhere. Go back to the 20s and look at some of the really good spirals in, in the world, and that would be far more interesting than that particular move. But that's my personal opinion. And this spin isn't particularly good. It's traveling. It doesn't have great speed. I think he needs to up his spinning ability if he's going to really stand in with some of the Swiss and uh, other skaters. Oh, uh, that was a double instead of a triple Salkow. Is it total improv right now? Well, I, I think he's just sort of uh, moving around. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't think it's... He's certainly not grabbing this performance. And uh, like, look at that. It's just falling out of that spin. I, it is not commendable. This is kind of a struggle here. Well, Dick, we've seen the judges hold up world champions and European champions before, but they sent a message in the short program that they were not going to do that. Got to imagine that the gold medal so far in the hands of Joubert. Well, I, I wouldn't be at all surprised, but, you know, you never know in this sport, particularly when you have this kind of a thing. We've also got 10, uh, I mean, how many judges? 14 judges, and you don't know which ones come from. Uh, the Russian block, so to speak. You don't know which marks actually count, only nine of them count, so there, there's your mystery right there. Right? We'll see. Well, this just wasn't his performance. It wasn't his day. I mean, in this single axle, it was to have been a triple, but watch that edge right there. It skids off on the heel, and that's one of the worst falls you can take in skating. Uh, I feel for him on that. Right there, see what happens to the edge, and it opens up and whammo. And this second attempt at a triple axel, watch what happens here. He just pops it, and nothing happens. But on this triple flip jump right here, look at how turned over the foot is. I don't understand how he can possibly skate on that. A toe pick is like a pole vault. You put it in straight, put it on an angle, you ain't going nowhere. <laughs> Joubert had technical merit marks in the 5.7 to 5.9 range. Check these out for Plushenko now, and here they are. 5.4 up to 5.8. You wonder about that 5.8. Well, he made too many mistakes in there, and it just was not acceptable. Now the presentation marks, 5.5 five up to... Look at the 5.9s. How did he get those? And the judges' placements, the majority of the judges putting him in second place, two still putting him in first. But overall, it's Brian Joubert who has the lead. There's a reason for that smile on his face right now. He has just beaten the world champ. However, there's one skater left, and he has a chance to win the gold. If you're in the top three, you can win. Elia Klimkin is next. Then, the ladies take the ice. Elena Sokolova carrying on the Russian tradition. Elena Lyashenko, the surprise of the Grand Prix Series this year. But the big buzz surrounds the home girl, Yulia Sebastian, the poster girl for this event here in Budapest. Don't forget our exclusive coverage of the 2004 World Figure Skating Championships begins Thursday, March 25th. First, you can check out the pairs and men's short programs on ESPN2 starting at 7 Eastern. Then, at 9 Eastern, switch over to ABC for the pairs and men's free skate. See the top skaters from around the globe compete in Dortmund, Germany at the 2004 World Figure Skating Championships.
Meanwhile, for the men so far, Frédéric Dambier of France trying to medal for the first time at the European Championships. He's in third. Behind you, Evgeny Plashenko. He got off to a great start with the combo, but then really struggled. The dominant skater this year, well, not here at Europeans. He's in second behind the French national champ. It is Brian Joubert who currently has the lead for the men. Next skater is Ilya Klimkin from Russia. But there's one skater left, and he has a chance to win the gold medal. Ilya Klimkin from Russia, the 99 World Junior Champion. So many expectations for him throughout the years since that title. But here he is, a chance not only to medal, but to win the gold at Europeans. He's got a bad Achilles tendon. He's here because he wants to medal, wants to stand on the top step of the podium, but also, remember, he wants to make the Russian World Championship team. Triple axle, triple toe. Good height, steady, clean landing, triple toe combination. Gosh, that was that was really very smooth and easy. That custom, sort of European techno, looks as a little bit as though he's caught in a wind tunnel somewhere. European techno, huh, Dick? Well, that's, that's as good as anything <laughs> for describing it. Look beautiful. Oh, very, very good quality, quality combinations. Now, look at the difference between this back bent kind of spin and the way Flashenko did it. That's a big improvement. A quad toe. Ah. He's a very interesting skater and he does unusual moves. Look at this. First, a camel to the right. A reverse camel for him. Now watch him into a one on the left foot and watch the pull out of this, the way he goes right into this, into a triple salcow. Very nice combination. Unusual for skaters to spin in both directions. Dancers do it all the time, skaters seldom. is in the exact same position as last year. Third place after the short program, but some mistakes in last year's free skate. He ended up fourth. Combination spin starting with the back spin and then going into a forward spin and a forward scratch spin. I love these moves. It's called a cantilevered spread eagle. It's right out of the days of frick and frack in the old ice shows. Very nice, very nice triple loop jump. He's a musical skater. He ah, uh, that's that's unfortunate. But one thing is, he's an interesting skater. There's always something additional, like right, right here, right there. You see him make those little changes of edge. Here's another one. So it makes these back crossovers more interesting. And even the entrance to this, an intentionally bent leg spiral as he moves into the rest of the corner of this step.
Butterflies into a flying camel. And this is a very difficult position to get, a, to get any speed into a spin. Intentionally awkward and very, very good. I like this. I mean, to me, he's a, uh, to me, I really like his skating. He has controlled arms and choreography. He believes in what he's doing. You may disagree with points here and there, but you know, he really understands it and is musical and follows it very clearly. Uh, I, I think he's a very, very creditable skater. Well, from one Russian to another, you have Genny Pleshenko standing by with Peter. Yevgeny Pleshenko, it was close after the short program between you and Joubert, but I have to ask you, with those triple axles, what was going on? You couldn't get them to work. Yeah, you know, uh, in the practice, I did very well uh, all, uh, all triples and triple axle and quads. So, but, you know, when I'm skating today and um, in a long program, I, like after the, this jump, I look in my topic and I, I'm like thinking, what was going on? What, what, how, what happened? I, do, I couldn't understand. Was your concentration not there because it was so close? Do you felt a lot more pressure from Joubert? No, well, you know, I did great uh, combination, quadruple, triple, and double. So I think about, like, I should did, I should jump two triple axles, and that's it. So I didn't. As you look forward to the world championships, what's your plan of attack at this point, having this behind you? Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, life not stop right now, and uh, I already uh, been three times European Championships and um, uh, two-time champion, world champion. So life not stop for me, and uh, I look forward to skate it, to com com compete, to compete with um, Joubert, with everybody in world championships. Thanks, Evgeny, and good luck, Terry. Hey, Peter, so philosophical. You have Genny Plushenko. He was beaten by Emmanuel Sandu, now beaten by Brian Joubert heading to the World Championships. We'll see in Dortmund. Ilya Klimkin, first set of marks for technical merit. There they are. Tough year for him. He lost his coach, Igor Rusikov, who passed away in July of leukemia. And now the presentation marks, and they're enough to keep Klimkin on the medal stand. So Ilya Klimkin, for the first time, able to medal at the European Championships. However, your champion is the Frenchman, the two-time French national champ who now is the European title holder. It is Brian Joubert over Yevgeny Plushenko and then Ilya Klimkin, your top three. Our Smart Ones, Smart Move replay from Brian Joubert, the quad-toe, triple-toe combination. The rest of the way, smooth sailing for the Frenchman. Just beat Plushenko in the short, handily in the long, and he's with Peter. Brian Joubert. You are now the European champion. At what moment in that program did you think you could possibly win this? Um, just after the second quad in combination with a uh, triple toe loop. But uh, it was not finished, so um, I had to do a triple loop, triple, triple loop. So it, it, was, it was not finished, so um, I don't know. Uh, Evgeny, it's a good skater, so he could be uh, do a very good program. Did you ever think you could beat Evgeny Plushenko? No, no, no. <laughs> for, <laughs> no, because uh, for me, a second place uh, was good, L like it's the last year. Uh, but first, uh, it's better. <laughs> well, now you round out your collection with a gold, silver, and bronze at the Europeans. Congratulations. Thank you, Terry. All right, Peter, not only a full collection, but a number of firsts for Brian Joubert today here in Budapest. And first time he's ever beaten Yevgeny Plushenko. Remember, he did the quad and the quad combination for the first time in a program. Peter Barna, the last non-Russian or non-Soviet to win the European title back in 92. The first gold medal for a Frenchman in some 40 years. Viva la France, to be sure. The French national champion now stepping it up. The ladies take the ice next. Yelena Sokolova trying to continue the run for the w Russian women. Yelena Lyashenko, she was great in the Grand Prix series. Can she win her first gold here? Or will it be Yulia Sebastian who hoists her arms to celebrate a gold at home in Budapest?
welcome you back to the capital city of Budapest. For the sixth time in its history, it is hosting the European Championships. It has also hosted five World Championships. And in pairs, the Russian dominance continued here at Europeans. Tatyana Topmianina and Maxime Marinin looking for the third European Championship. Easily skated to the gold medal over Petrova and Tikhonov, their countrymen, and Zagorska and Sudek from Poland. And the Russians have now won 37 of the last 40 gold medals in pairs at the European Championships. And they did it with a brand new free skate. In ice dance, it was another Russian team winning the gold medal. Tatiana Navka and Roman Kostomarov. They've been on a roll. We saw them in the Grand Prix series. They have won everything this year. They have yet to lose. They recently won the Russian national title. And here in Budapest, they captured the gold. It was closer than most expected, though. They barely edged out Denkova and Stavisky from Bulgaria. But a Russian gold in pairs and a Russian gold in ice dance. They are clearly the favorites at the World Championships in Dortmund, Germany in March. Still to come, the ladies take the ice, looking to settle the gold medal question here in Budapest. A day of surprises continues in Budapest. Yelena Sokolova needs a near-perfect performance to keep Russia's medal hopes alive. Yelena Lyashenko, in her 11th consecutive Europeans, is poised to enjoy her best finish yet. But the biggest buzz surrounds the home team. Hungary's Victoria Pavut provided the unexpected sparks in the short program and has instantly commanded everyone's attention. While local hero Yulia Sebastian has more than matched the expectations of her friends, family, and adopted home city. The free skate is next. So, inside Budapest Sports Arena, we've had one surprising finish already today. What about another? It uh, kind of looks like that. Peggy Fleming joins me and Dick Button, Peter Carruthers now. The ladies free skate on tap, including a hometown hero here in Budapest. Yulia Sebastian, that's the skater many in this arena have come to see, Peggy. Well, Ilya has never finished higher than third at the Europeans, and she's never felt this kind of pressure before. She's in first place after a great short program and is skating in front of a very enthusiastic hometown crowd. But she'll have to block out all those distractions and skate cleanly to win this title. What about Yelena Lyashenko from Ukraine? She did very well in the Grand Prix series. That was a surprise. She has medaled at Europeans before. Well, she's entering this free skate after the best season of her life and she had a terrific short program here and is in second place and she looks very focused and ready to finally win this title how about the youngster though the 18 year old dick who has come out of nowhere victoria pavuk yes victoria pavuk well she's been a breath of fresh air in this competition long-legged long-limbed a long drink of water and very interesting to watch and Elena Sokolova is here. Now, she was the young lady who had such trouble getting back into shape. But she succeeded in that area, and she's in much finer condition now than she was uh, a short while back. She sometimes places her jumps too close to the barrier, but she's a lot more secure than she was during the fall. It was at Europeans last year where she started to make her international move, eventually won the silver medal at the World Championships, but she's got a long way to go if she's going to continue the Russian dominance. Look at what they have done. The eight gold medals. The last six years, the Russians have gone one, two, and there have been four years in which they have swept the podium here at the European Championships. One of those trying to stop the run is here at home, in front of a home crowd. Yulia Sebastian. Got to make her nervous with family and friends here. For more on that, let's join Peter Carruthers. Well, what a big surprise, Terry. Nobody thought that Yulia Sebastian of Hungary was going to be in first place after the short program. But here she is, and she's going to get plenty of support from the 8,000 fans that have come to see her, among them 24 family members with two very nervous parents who've made the two-hour drive from where she grew up. 
But being the hometown favorite here in Budapest is a challenge because she's been here for the last 10 years training. She has her picture on the front of the program, on the poster, and today in this newspaper. She says she's going to try to use the energy from the fans to help her get through the difficult four-minute program. If she stays focused and wins the gold here, well, it's history because she becomes the first Hungarian lady to win the European Championships. Back to you. All right, Peter, we'll see if that takes place. Surprising top three, Yulia Sebastian, then Leah Shanko, and another Hungarian skater, Pavuk, rounding out that top three. Yelena Sokolova in the short program skated first, one of the reasons her scores were low. But here we go, the free skate on tap, and it's Victoria Pavuk, the 18-year-old from Budapest. Awfully nervous, no doubt. Plenty of supporters here, and also her family members. There's her mom on the right side of the screen. You can tell how nervous she is. What a position for the 18-year-old to be in. The first time European champion will be crowned today, no doubt about that. There is no qualifying round here for the ladies, so the old saying is true. If you're in the top three heading to the free skate, you win that portion of the competition, you are the overall champion. And this is Victoria's first big senior competition, and Victoria feels that her jumps are her strength, and she knows she needs to improve on her presentation. jump is a triple triple combination she landed this for the first time in competition for her in the short program the triple lutz triple toe and here it comes again triple lutz triple toe very nice i think that short program gave her a lot of confidence to be able to pull this off in the long program however i feel her technique looks a little bit stiff but it, she pulls it off for her positioned legs but the back bend is nice her type of body is the kind of body that choreographer george valentine would have liked long arms and long legs he was quoted as saying a long string makes the most interesting knots huge step up in class this is for Victoria. She competed on the Junior Grand Prix level this season, did quite well, made it to the Grand Prix final and won the bronze medal. Also won the Hungarian silver medal. A year after winning the Junior Championship, National Championship that is. She has good speed over the ice but rushes these moves, the spiral sequence. She could hold these a lot longer. Cow. Very stiff legs. She had a little struggle on the landing. You know, I like this, this young lady very much. She unfortunately is unfinished at this point. She needs to get rid of that high kick. She needs to be able to sharpen up the technique and stop pumping when she moves around the ice. But she's refreshing. I really enjoy watching her. I think she has a long way to go. All the problems are fixable ones. Another point is that the program doesn't stop in beat or tempo. It doesn't have highs and lows and changes. Nice triple toe. Finally, a smile on her face. She certainly has speed and energy. And mm -hmm. 
right here. There's a very nice, if I remember correctly, a very nice split that she gets into. Not a, a Russian split that is hacked away, but a beautiful uh, grand jeté. Good for her. I think there's a lot of potential in this young lady. You know, it just needs to be softened. It needs to be smoothed out. And all of the things that I, I would question with it, you, you really don't mind saying because basically she's very talented, I think, and, and a very potentially successful skater. We saw how proud her mom was there in the stands. And this home crowd, too, she's from right here in Budapest. Many on their feet for the 18-year-old who was 12 at the Junior World Championships last year. And here was this milestone move that she did, this triple lutz, triple toe, and just pulled this off, made it look very easy, a little stiff on the landing, but otherwise very nicely done. And this had a lot of personality, a lot of energy, the straight line footwork step. She really covers the ice with a lot of speed and really a lot of energy. And now in the kiss and cry area, waiting for her march. Can't believe it. I, I think being in this position, a top three position at Europeans, heading into the free skate, 5'4 to 5'8. Technical merit. Now the presentation marks 5.2 up to 5.7 for Victoria Pabu from Budapest. The 2004 European Figure Skating Championships and the Ladies Free Skate will continue in just a moment. The two-time Finnish national champion is next, 21-year-old Susanna Pokio, who won the bronze medal at the Junior World Championship back in 2001. Last year on the senior level at World, she was 11. to the crowd very well. She's opening with triple lutz, double toe. Speed going into this. Wow, that was almost like a corkscrew movement in the air, but very nice and clean. Uh, the landing, very good. combination first a triple no a double and then a double toe double flip double toe combination not good enough but she skates with a very nice straight back very nice posture good presentation Straight legs in that in that jump. I mean, really, uh, very elegantly done. I mentioned that she had won two national championships in Finland, but she hadn't skated in that event in the last couple of years. Not since. 2002, didn't compete this year because of an injured ankle, but the Finnish Feder Federation opting to send her to Europeans over Alina Katunin, who has really struggled internationally. Very weak layback spin, very stiff positions.
This music is so good for straight line footwork. You really want to just sort of develop that to its fullest. This triple sow cow steps out of that. Spinal combination spin. Positions could be a lot better. A little sloppy. She is very pleasant to watch, a beautiful young lady. Put together, but a couple of mistakes. Last year in Malmo, a ninth place finish at the European Championships. We'll check her marks in just a moment. When we come back, one of the overall favorites, Elena Lyashenko from Ukraine. She won twice in the Grand Prix Series this year. She'll try to win the European title next here in a city that has had a turbulent and tragic history. As World War II raged, Hungary fell under German control. To stop the advancing Russian army, the Germans reduced the city to rubble and blew up the bridges along the Danube. Three quarters of the city was left uninhabitable. The Soviets gained control in 1945 and ruled here until communism was toppled back in 1989. Since World War II, however, this city has almost been entirely rebuilt, and it stands as a beautiful European capital today. in Budapest with a look at many of the top names that the U.S. skaters will face at the upcoming World Figure Skating Championships presented by Olay. Our coverage getting underway on March 25th on ESPN2, ABC Sports, the men and the Paris Championships, then on the 27th on ABC Sports in primetime. Ladies and ice stands, check out Michelle Kwan, Sasha Cohen leading the way. And for the men, Johnny Weir, this year's U.S. champion. It should be a great World Championships in Dortmund. Meanwhile, the European title on the line for the ladies. And taking the ice, Yelena Lyashenko from Ukraine, the 27-year-old who won the bronze medal all the way back in 1995 at Europeans. Well, she skates with a very nice calm and confidence in her skating. She really takes her time with her choreography. By the way, the marks for Susanna Pocchio from Finland, 5.1 up to 5.6 for technical merit, 5.3 to 5.7 for presentation, and she is currently in second place overall. She's very odd technique, really telegraphing her entrance into her jumps, triple lutz, double toe, but it works for her. That's actually a, a, a mark down under the new system where entrances into jumps must be different and unusual and not long telegraph moves like that was and like this is. Look at this step here. I mean, that's an atrocious habit. She certainly does have nice spring, even though that jump was uncontrolled at the landing, not checked out. There's a great steadiness about her, a security in her skating. This is her 11th consecutive trip to the European Championships. During that time, she has had seven top five finishes, including that bronze back in 95. Well, it really shows her comfort zone with competing.
funeral sequence. Maybe a little better. Position's not very flattering. And of course, that bad habit of having to hold your leg into the air. jump as a triple loop and she hasn't even included this in her program she's only the only one of the the top ladies not doing a triple loop in her program and that might hurt her on the technical part i mean look at the length of that entrance into it i can't believe the delay on that this straight line footwork i mean there's some rather nice little moves in this uh in this dance sequence right there look at that very sort of rather charming not unusual but interesting but she's showing a lot of energy at the end of this four-minute program. Nice double axle, and this final combination spin. Good speed. Positions could be a little bit more full out, but she does give this nice energy. Very secure skater, uh, and it's nice to have seen her develop over all the years. I just wish she'd stop telegraphing those jumps, and I think that would improve probably her position even more as she uh, moves towards the World Championship. Besides Elena Sokolova, she was probably the top name entering these championships. Look, look at that right there. The length of this delay into it, and then the fact that she puts her toe pick in on the side. I've, I, I'm amazed that she can do such a good jump. And this triple toe loop, watch what happens here as she turns this, toe picks in, and then watch the landing. Fails to check it. The right shoulder swings around. Must hold it back. That side of the body to correct it. Based on her success this season, she's probably the favorite coming in. Technical merit marks, there they are. And they're very close together, 5'4 to 5'8. That's not a wide range for this kind of a panel. Now the presentation marks, 5.5 up to 5.9, and the judges' placement, seven of the nine judges putting her in first place. Right now, let's send it over to Peter Carruthers with a special guest. Thank you, Terry. I'm with famous Russian skating coach Tatiana Tarasova and former coach of Sasha Cohen. Tatiana, what led to the breakup between you and Sasha? No, we work very successful, and uh, we have results, and we work one and a half year maybe it's enough it's i i think it's better when american famous coach work with american famous skaters now sasha cohen is a very strong-willed athlete what do you think the biggest challenge was working with her all champions it's very strong yeah I am a fan of Sasha. I, I love your skating. She skates natural, and she she's wonderful. And uh, she um, she's skating like um, bird song. Mm -hmm. It's um, it's enough work together because we made some part of this very important work. Okay. Well, thank you for your time, Terry. Interesting. Uh, Yelena Sokolova is another Russian trying to continue the Russian dominance, but got a long way to go in six, trying to make a comeback when we come back to Budapest. A city that seemingly has a gorgeous piece of architecture around every corner in which you turn. This is the Great Synagogue, Europe's largest and the second largest in the world. Can Evgeny Plushenko defend his men's world title? Can Michelle Kwan win her sixth world championship? Those questions will be answered and many more as ABC Sports, ESPN, and ESPN2 provide exclusive coverage of the 2004 World Figure Skating Championships from Dortmund, Germany. Our coverage begins Thursday, March 25th on ESPN2.
Yelena Sokolova set to go now. This could be the first time since 93 that no Russian lady makes it to the podium here at the European Championships. However, Sokolova says the team is still very talented and deep. We have really much good skaters in Russia now, and it's really good because the level of the team is really high when you have lots of good skaters who is always behind of you. You try to push more hard, you try to skate more hard, and you need to practice more and more because you always saw that somebody <laughs> at the back is really strong. Next skater on the ice, uh, from Russia. Since 1996, a Russian lady has won the European Championship that could come to an end today. Elena Sokolova on the way back in sixth position after the short program. Here's the 23-year-old from Moscow who won the silver medal at the World Championships last year and at this event, the Europeans. Well, she really needs to skate a very clean free skate here, needs to focus. She looks in much better condition than she did earlier in the season. Now look at how close she puts this to the boards. It really makes me very nervous in watching it. First a triple Lutz and then a triple toe and she's inches away from pulling the Midori Ito on that. <laughs> Remember, Midori Ito was the one who fell out to the triple lutz, fell out where the camera opening was, bowed to the camera operator, and then jumped back onto the ice. Very nice triple flip, good spring, nice tight turns in the air. of her poor start this season was a torn ligament in her knee. And after the Campbell's Classic in October at Madison Square Garden, she flew back to Russia to have that operated on. And back on the ice right away, started training. Now another triple-triple combination here. Triple sow cow right there. Very nice triple toe. That's fantastic. I mean, she's done two triple-triple combinations, and I think that'll really help her in the technical score. That's also very good in comparison to what any of the other top ladies in the world do from a technical point of view. And this is good timing because the World Championships are coming up, so this is a good time to get some confidence in jumps like that. could certainly use some improvement. Of course, Yelena is, is the top Russian name here because the five-time champ, Irina Slutskaya, is not competing here. She's at home recuperating. She has an inflammatory disease that involves the blood vessels that affect her heart. It could be very serious, but we can tell you that she is back on the ice training, hopes to go to the World Championships. He'll skate for a group of Russian officials who will decide whether or not to send her to Dortmund this season. skaters today just don't emphasize the ability of, and don't show the ability of doing a really first-rate split like we've seen Sasha Cohen do and so many great skaters in the past. It's 
certainly was infinitely better than what we've seen in the past in the fall of this year. So she's very happy with that. Well, I think it's a wonderful accomplishment for her to you know, skate that well and, and be back on top again. Giving herself a hand as she leaves uh, the ice here. At least comes to the middle of the ice. Yeah, you got to do that. Elena Sokolova in sixth place after the short program. Got to believe she's going to move up there. And here, this very difficult triple-triple jump she did early in the program. Triple Lutz right there. You can see it's a true Lutz with that outside edge takeoff. Nice, good lift. Tight turns in the air. Very neat, but very close to the boards. And very solidly done. And here, this triple sow cow triple toe combination. Very difficult, and she made it look really easy. Very nice and complete. A little shaky on that landing, but... Otherwise, very well. Great skate for her. Now on the kiss and cry. Technical merit marks by four up to five eight. There's her coach Kudryatsev. She switched over from Alexei Mishin. And these presentation marks very steady. Up to 5-9, and the judges' placement, seven of the nine judges putting her in first place. But remember, that's just for the free skate. Overall, Sokolova into second, and Yelena Lyashenko from Ukraine is still your leader. But there's one skater left, and she's here at home in Budapest. Yulia Sebastian takes the ice when we come back with the gold medal on the line. Little paprika, a little Hungarian goulash, not a bad mix for a great meal here in Budapest. A reminder, you can check out the best skaters in terms of the ladies and the ice dance at the World Championships Saturday, March 27th. On ESPN at 5 Eastern, the original dance and the ladies short. Then on ABC Sports, the free dance and the ladies free skate starting at 8 Eastern. The 2004 World Championships on ABC Sports, ESPN, and ESPN2. Meanwhile, back inside the Budapest Sports Arena, Yulia Sebastian, who left her home, which is about two and a half hours from here, when she was 13 years of age, to train just for a moment like this, trying to become the first lady from Hungary to win a European title in front of her mother and her father. It will be very difficult because Hungary is a very small country and they are putting so much faith in me. This is a very big opportunity for Hungary and for Hungarian skating in general. Well, she competed at the European Championships back in 1995 when she was just 13 years of age. She was the youngest competitor in that event. Last year, she won the bronze medal, but what a moment this would be here in her hometown. Here's Yulia Sebastian trying to make history. Well, the pressure of being in first place at this point, going into the free skate and skating in her hometown will either help her or destroy her. She's very well trained and has wonderful jumping ability. Great spring to her jumps. Watch the ease of this. The control of it. Lovely high spring. A great edge coming out. This combination here, triple lutz, double toe. Very nice flowing edge out of the triple lutz right into the double toe. That's what you want. And what wonderful spring she has. That's the best in ladies skating. Beautiful triple loop. Nice entrance with the back freeze. crowd just building too they may blow the roof off this place if she continues like this double it rather than a triple lutz A 
layback spin that could certainly use some leg improvement positions in the leg not very good. She really takes her time with her choreography, really finishes off her moves. What I like about it is that there are no silly arm movements, no flailing arms all over the place that we see so often among so many skaters. Wonderful lift, wonderful lift. footwork, a lot of energy, a lot of quick steps. I think it's, it's interesting to watch a career like hers. This is their seventh trip to Europeans, but for some reason it now comes together. Is it confidence or what? Well, I think a, a lot of it is that experience and, you know, sometimes it just does just come together. But I think it also comes with age. She's 22 years old. She, she really understands what she's doing it for. performance good for her she is very happy with herself as she should be and she's good because she has strong skating wonderful edges look at how enthusiastic her parents are here and most important of all she stood up to the pressure and that was very very mm -hmm. nice to see Yulia and Laszlo, her parents. And what a moment for her. Here at home, this has been her home for most of the last decade. Budapest and Yulia Sebastian having it all come together. A standing ovation. She may have just made history, becoming the first lady to win the European title. We'll check her marks when we come back to the European Championships. In Budapest, the arena still buzzing after the performance of Yulia Sebastian. And this is the best quality of her skating are these beautiful jumps, this triple lutz, nice good air position, nice flowing edge in between the jumps. Made them look effortless. And this triple toe, double toe, she did later in the program was a little struggle on the landing, but she turns it out and, and finishes it very nice, very strong at the end of the four minutes. Now, she had the lead after the short program. I don't imagine she did anything out there, which took away from that, but we'll see. First set of march for technical merit, 5-5 five, five up to 5-9. And those marks are really quite close together, not a wide ring, and I think what they're finally doing is recognizing solid skating. But you never know which ones count. Nine of them actually do. The presentation marks up to 5-9, and the judges' placements, six of the nine judges putting her in first, that's all that matters. The one judge putting her in third, but her mother loves it. The arena loving it here in Budapest, where she has lived for much, much of the last decade. So Yulia Sebastian able to become the first Hungarian lady to capture the European title. What a moment for her, and she has made her way out of Kiss and Cry over to have a word with our Peter Carruthers right now. Peter? Congratulations, Yulia. Hungary's first gold medal at the European Championships in ladies figure skating. You started skating in Hungary when you were three years old on an outdoor rink. Talk about what it's like to now be European champion. So I'm, I'm very happy. I can believe this. Uh, yes, it was uh, when I when, when I started uh, to skate. I was 
three years old, and I, when I was 13, uh, I had to come to Budapest to practice here without my parents, and it was it was very difficult. But uh, always, every day, I just try try to work very hard, and uh, now I could do both programs, short and free, very good, and I'm so happy. And how about your family watching in the stands? That must have been great for you. <laughs> yes, everybody was. So good the audience. Uh, it was very difficult to skate. That's why they were so good. But uh, at the end of the program, they they were just happy and clapping for me. So I was very happy. Well, congratulations on your victory, Terry. All right, Peter. Thank you very much. Her parents just loving every minute of it, and uh, they got to feel like all of that sacrifice, at least for this moment. Certainly worthwhile. Back with an historic award ceremony in a moment. A reminder, ABC Sports, ESPN, and ESPN2 will provide exclusive coverage of the 2004 World Figure Skating Championships from Dortmund, Germany. Our coverage begins Thursday, March 25th with the pairs and men's competitions and concludes Saturday with the dance and ladies championships. The world's best in figure skating competing at the 2004 World Championships on ABC Sports, ESPN, and ESPN2. Inside... An award ceremony taking place that basically everyone in this arena can feel a part of. Certainly a moving moment for Yulia Sebastian. Julia Sebastian's career. She is now a gold medalist at the European Championships. Shenko and Sokolova joining her on the podium. And for the Russians, another one making the podium. They've made it every year since 1994. And don't forget, coverage of the 2004 World Championships from Dortmund, Germany, begins Thursday, March 25th on ESPN, ESPN2, and ABC Sports. Four. Peggy Fleming, Dick Button, and Peter Carruthers. I'm Terry Gannon. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. So long from Budapest, everybody.